with you, uh, Prof Kot will, will share with us some ideas or some of his thoughts about the future of education. Uh, and I think that is correlational with arts, arts uh, and the media. Like, you know, I see arts as an extension of society. How do you create society? Uh, and, and so education plays the same role as well, I think. So, so without further ado, uh, Prof Kwok. Thank you. Uh, I have to follow arts example and stand up. <laughs> that way I'll get more attention, especially after lunch. Yeah. So I'm very happy to be here and uh, thank you the organisers uh, for inviting me. I'd just like to pick up on one or two things that Art has just said. When he said, soul infrastructure, you know how the word soul is spelled, right? It's not S-O-L-E, it's S-O-U-L, right? And that's a very interesting term because in Singapore, when we say infrastructure, you know, we are meaning, you know, high scrapers, uh, uh, Marina Bay Sands, and so on, right? Um, and it's very interesting, you ended on the note about popular culture. And you notice that there is something in popular culture which is very rebellious, which is very, in, you can almost even say anti-establishment for it to have that kind of creativity. But this leads to the next topic, which is education. In some ways, many educational systems instead of making us creative, uh, making us something else. Right? So this leads me to my, my uh, presentation. And as it happens, uh, Art has set up the stage for me because there is one definition of education. If you go to the English word education, it comes from certain roots back to Latin. And there was a novel in the... In the many years ago, which was turned into a movie. Uh, and this is a, a teacher whose, whose style of educating her students was very different from her headmistress, who was like the standard, conventional, controlling type. And it's interesting, the words here, right? Education means to lead out, to draw out that which is already there in the pupil's soul. Right? When we want to talk about soul infrastructure, first of all, we must assume that there is a soul to be drawn out. Right? Rather than another word, which is to put in, as if students or pupils are like empty vessels. And in fact, the truth is, sometimes students think of themselves as passive recipients rather than active agents in the process of learning. And this is what I'm trying to stress today. So, I was asked by my friend here to say something about the current state of education versus some future state. As it turns out, some of you might have missed out that some days ago in the budget debate on education, someone no less than the Minister for Education, anybody know his name? You see, you've been badly educated. <laughs> you can't answer factual questions like that. All right? So what did, what did the Minister of Education say? I mean, we can, you know, this is the Minister of Education saying something about the current state of education. And I'll just flash it out to see whether you think that there's any truth in it. And he also wants to move to some future state. All right? Here we go. You know, in Chinese, there's a, there's a word, du shu, which means literally study book, right? Study book or read book, right? And that is accompanied by a paper chase for certification, for degrees and so on. And you know that in Singapore, there's actually, there are actually two educational systems. One, the one by MOE, the other one is the tuition industry which is a big industry. It's a multi-million dollar industry. Right? And there's a lot of concerns, concern with grades. Then there's this idea, I'm using the minister's words here, I'll give the proper attribution later, a vertical stacking of qualifications. Right? Starting from, oh, nowadays I notice even kindergarten has graduation ceremonies. Right? You put on motor board and gown and so on. And then, of course, the next big hurdle, PSLE, O-levels, A-levels, and so on. Then, of course, apparently, there's quite a bit of 
spoon feeding and model answers. Why? Because exams are geared for you to answer in one way. You have to come up with the one correct answer. All right? If you don't have that co correct answer, that single correct answer, you'll be marked wrong. Okay, Minister Heng Sui Kiat said, we have to move to a model whereby you have learning with joy for life. Now, as you all can see, you know, are, are people having this joy for life in the schools? Think about it. Learning for mastery, learning beyond grades, learning throughout life, lifelong learning, learning for life beyond just for work, so I would ask you all to consider these two models and ask where are we now? All right? Obviously, I think we are more to the left than to the right. And can you imagine what it means for Singapore's education system to transform itself to the right? Learning with joy for life. All right? And that's the attribution to the minister. All right, you cannot read these statistics, but actually it can be found easily, right? Nowadays, we can Google for a lot of things. In the Ministry of Education website, you can find this vertical stacking of qualifications. Just look at one year here, 2013, right? When we, when we start out with 100% of primary one pupils, all right, most, of course, would make it past PSLE. Then 89 or 90 percent pass N levels or O levels, all right? And it'll be actually interesting to find out what's the difference between N level and O level. Then you go to A level, 26 percent. ITE, 22 percent. Polytechnic, 46 percent. Junior college, 28 percent. And then come down here, 29 percent university. And we all know that university is seen to be the pinnacle of the whole system, the apex of the pyramid. So if you go back to the former slide, is it really possible for us to move from one system to the other system when the current system really is a highly competitive system in which the ladder needs to be climbed? And every step of climbing up to get entry into the next step, you need a passport. The passport is your PSLE, your O-level, your A-level, your poly results, and so on. All right? Okay, I have some thoughts. I think maybe education, the word has been mixed up with schooling rather than with learning, with uh, getting a certificate rather than with learning. Right? So, some of you may know that in German, in the German language, there's a word that's called Bildung. Right? I'm sure we can find a good equivalent in other languages. But in German, this word means some kind of cultivation or formation, forming yourself. Right? And this is really important. I think everything that Art has said, if you yourself are not working on forming and building and cultivating yourself, you cannot have that sense of freedom, autonomy, that is absolutely necessary for creativity. Right? Because you are just a digit within the system and you are just going after these little passports that will make you climb higher and higher. Right? And of course, there are Malay equivalents uh, you know, when we say education in, Mal in Bahasa and we say learning in Bahasa, there are two different meanings, right? One is about schooling. Now, this is a, a little complicated, but just look at this, right? Most of the time, especially now, when we have all these gadgets, right? We can find information, but we don't know what to do with the information. There's just an overload of information which we can get at our fingertips instantaneously, right? In fact, maybe even now some of us are checking our handphones for the latest information or anything, right? But where is, what is the whole process here? What does it involve? What does education involve? Especially 
when you want to go for more than just processing information. I just give you a, a statistic. You know, in uh, late 1970s, anybody play chess here? Ah, you all know what is deep blue? Yes? How many moves can the, a computer, deep blue, process? How many? Huh? A computer, 5 to 10 moves? Are you kidding? In 1977, Gary Kasparov challenged Deep Blue. It was a very sad day because Kasparov lost. Deep Blue could process 1 billion possible moves per second. The best human grandmaster can process something like 200 moves. So, do you still think that there's something that is uniquely human which can be overtaken by computers but which we may still want to retain because that's the creativity part. I'll just uh, uh, follow up on what Art is saying. In this morning's papers, there is a reprinted article from the New York Times. It says, if an algorithm wrote this, how would you even know? Apparently, computers now are writing reports, books, uh, uh, sports, uh, sports coverage on sports events. I'm sure, com I'm, I'm sure algorithms can write music, right? can write lyrics and so on. There is, actually, they've been experimenting. Yes, so it can be done. Of course, there is some human creativity in coming up with those algorithms. But if that were the case, would people like art lose their relevance in our society? Would, would artists really, you know, maybe we can all go back to listen computer-generated music based on algorithms. Is there still a need for human beings to exercise judgment, to come up with insights, to interpret and so on? This is something that I would like to put on the table for you. Okay, I was given instruction, I must come up with three challenges. I don't know why three, my friend. Right? So, three, right? and, and I'm moving towards the end of my talk here. One is technology. We know that technology is the big story, right? We are moving from books to MOOCs. You know what are MOOCs, right? Massive, what? Okay, you fail. <laughs> no marks for you. Half mark. Massive, open online courses, right? And, and this is very interesting, right? Because any one of us can access one of these MOOC courses in one of the best, any of the best universities in the world, for free, by the way. It's only when you want some recognition certification that's the problematic part. But what this means is that maybe universities are unnecessary. Because if we can learn on our own, the, our only challenge is how do we prove to employers that we have the knowledge, right? So, technology is a big thing today, but all these possibilities which are really, really, uh, really uh, liberating, right? Because these possibilities bring about uh, opportunities that we never knew before, our parents never knew before. When I was a young boy, to find out anything, I have to go to the library, I have to walk up a few floors, go and look for the code number of a certain book, and the answer may not even be there. Whereas now, it's just a matter of Googling, right? Now, the other side of the coin is all this Googling and having information at your fingertips and dealing with this overload of information. Is that something that has a downside. Is there another side to the coin? And this is what I want to uh, question. Right? Uh, is, is the speed in which information is being archived and also being retrieved, does the speed also come with a cost? And the cost is just like the loss of human judgment, 
that computers and the algorithms make possible, make redundant? Do we still need the human being in the process of learning? Back to the first slide about education being something that is drawing out from the pupil's soul rather than putting something in, right, into an empty vessel. So this is something I would like you all to, to think, the two sides of the coin. Then, of course, something that we all face. Eh? Now, how many of you here, right, I want a show of hands to this following question. How many of you here think that certificates, degrees, diplomas are not important? Hands up. This is the truth, right? Okay. I think this is a self-selected group. Maybe that's why you are here. Right? And if there are so many of you, then there is hope to move to them, the future. Because outside of this room, okay, and then let me turn the question around because I didn't get the answer that I wanted. Right? How many of your parents think that certificates, diplomas and degrees are not important? Okay? Fewer number of hands. Right? Fewer number of hands. So, for you brave souls who think the way you think, you also need to have some questioning of what your parents think. Right? By the way, I don't need to be recorded that I'm teaching you to go back and argue with your parents. <laughs> <laughs> right. Although I think someone like Art, you know, uh, I think it, it would happen anyway because, <laughs> right? because it's a, a new generation, we have to expect that kind of thing right? because of the, the sense of self-responsibility, autonomy that, as I said, was very basic to any kind of creativity. Okay? So, again, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a challenge right? for, for anyone to say, look, I don't think that having a piece of paper that shows me that I have climbed the educational ladder to a certain level. I don't think it's important because employers think so, right? If the government were very serious about this, the government as one of the biggest employers might have to do something about this, you know? And any time you apply for a grant from a government agency, they must not, they must not ask you for your, for your educational level. They must Say, show me your creativity. Send in your CD, right? Don't tell me whether you have, you, you, you have a, a degree, right? So there are very big questions. If we really want to move to that kind of imagined future educational system in which there is learning for joy, there is that kind of creativity and so on, right? Okay, so I give one last challenge, right? Which is something I have said before which is study book, right? We say in Chinese, du shu, right? Reading. But I want to give a different meaning of the word reading, a wider meaning of the word reading. You know, if you treat many things like a kind of text, right? Uh, a, a film is a text, a piece of music is a text, right? Signs, symbols, right? people's facial expressions, your body language as you are sitting here, how do you read them? This ability to read beyond the textbook, how do you read a human situation? How do you read a crisis between two countries? How do you read situations in which human lives are threatened and violence is occurring. How do you read? Right? This requires critical thinking. And very often, there is no one correct answer. And when you have no one correct answer, life is more complicated. But life is also more challenging. If you are always going for 100% certainty, if you think that in life there is no ambiguity, 
there is no contradiction, no dilemmas that you have to face, no tensions in your life, then please go for that one correct answer, which, by the way, may not even work. We are past that in the world that we are living to today. So, that kind of critical thinking, critical reading, which involves interpretation, and it involves something else, which is, I think, close to what art is saying. It involves imagining that there can be alternatives to what is there now. Alternatives to the status quo. Alternative to the current reality. And actually, those of you who are entrepreneurs and so on, that's the kind of spirit because you are taking the risk to say that, look, the situation now that we have is not, number one, it's not the only way to, to read this situation. Number two, the situation can be changed. Right? So let me end now. Education is not just about chasing after a piece of paper. It's about cultivating your character. It's about gaining wisdom in a very torturous and complicated way in which the answer cannot be given to you and you yourself have to do the hard work for, of searching for the answer. And education is also about how to live a life not only for yourself but also for others and with dignity. And it's dignity as a concept is also very abstract. An artist has dignity. An artist has to have a sense of dignity for the artist to go against conventional wisdom, right? So, and, and we, are now living, we are now living in a world where human dignity is challenged on many fronts in terms of human rights abuse, in terms of violence, in terms of people not caring and so on. And education is a very important part of that whole process of forming ourselves, cultivating ourselves for wisdom and for dignity. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much.